different greenhouse gases and how the carbon cycle works to try and maintain a balance. So here, we have things called carbon sources and carbon sinks. So carbon sources emit greenhouse gases and carbon sinks absorb them to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases in the air. So let's give a few examples here. So sources would be like burning fossil fuels or even extracting fossil fuels from the ground. So fossil fuels, we know combustion produces carbon dioxide. Okay, so you can think of combustion in the forms of a few different things. So things like fires, forest fires, as an example. Um, another sort of form of combustion, which we'll give its own little bullet here, is respiration. So that's all us animals. We exhale carbon dioxide. And then things like volcanoes, which emit uh, methane gas and carbon dioxide. We also have carbon sinks. So carbon sinks absorb. So these things are all emitting carbon. These are all examples. So respiration, um, deforestation, so there's your fire, um, human activities, burning of fossil fuels, extraction of fossil fuels. But then we also have some carbon sinks, so things like uh, plants through photosynthesis can absorb carbon back into, um, into like a usable form in terms of building plant pieces. And the ocean is also a carbon sink. So examples, oceans and photosynthesis. But what's happening lately is that our carbon sources are outweighing our carbon sinks, which means that on average, more is going out than coming back in. So we're getting an increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which causes that increase in global temperature. So when our carbon cycle is unbalanced, so when carbon sources are greater than or outweigh our carbon sinks, we get an increase in global temperature. So average global temperature increases. That's why a lot of people refer to it as global warming. But climate change is a lot more than just global warming. There's a lot of other things that are going on. Um, and there's a bit of a misconception that everywhere gets hotter. And that's not necessarily true. There are places in the world that are actually getting colder. But as an average plant over the entire planet, our average is increasing. So let's look at some of the greenhouse gases. We'll go over the four main ones. So we'll start with carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide comes from remo removing and burning fossil fuels. from forest fires, because remember, combustion always creates water and carbon dioxide. So forest fires. Volcanoes. And decomposition. So think of like decomposing plants and trees and stuff in swamps. The next one we're gonna look at is methane which is the most powerful greenhouse gas. Okay, methane is CH4.
So this comes from landfills. Rice fields. So cows are a big one. Other animals, but cows are the biggest. Bacteria and bogs, that's why they smell so bad. And thawing permafrost. So there's methane in the ground that's been trapped for hundreds and hundreds of years. And as the permafrost melts, it gets released as a gas into the atmosphere. Next one is nitrous oxide. So that's that N2O. Produced by bacteria in the ocean. From wet soil, so that happens um, when you have flooding, a lot of flooding. Fertilizers and car exhaust. If you think back to our car exhaust activity, that also sort of counts as burning fossil fuel. So we also get carbon dioxide from cars, but we also get this nitrous oxide piece. The last main one we're going to talk about is water vapor. So the biggest one would be evaporation through the water cycle. So, you know, water as it heats up from a pond or an ocean goes in to the clouds and that kind of stuff. So evaporation when it goes from a liquid to a gas. Okay, so think of the water cycle. Respiration as well, which is a form of combustion. We exhale carbon dioxide, and we produce extra water. We actually exhale some of that water vapor. Combustion. Again, so remember our combustion reactions always end with carbon dioxide and water. But when you've got something like a fire, everything's really hot, so our water comes as a gas rather than a liquid into the atmosphere. And then irrigation. So irrigation is a form of like watering fields to produce crops. And so when you have a lot of water anywhere, you're always gonna get some evaporating out. So these are the four main greenhouse gases that we talked about throughout the year. Make sure that you know some examples of both natural and anthropogenic sources for each one. So natural being um, part of the natural greenhouse effect happens naturally on Earth and then um, anthropogenic being human caused, so that would be things like removing and burning fossil fuels, car exhaust, irrigation, that kind of stuff. So moving on to the back side of the page, we're going to look at some of the connections between um, all the different effects of climate change. So looking at the top piece here, we've got the four spheres. So the atmosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere, and the lithosphere. Lithosphere is like the ground, hydrosphere is all the water, atmosphere is the air, and the biosphere is all the living things. So plants and animals that are in all of those places. So we're going to go through and we're going to make some notes on this of all the different ways that climate change has affected all of these different spheres to show how when something happens in one, it, can, it will affect the others as well. So we'll start with the lithosphere. And so the first thing that comes to mind when you think of greenhouse gases being produced from the lithosphere is thawing permafrost. So we're gonna add that in. Thawing permafrost creates, you know, more carbon dioxide and methane, which increases the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which then increases temperature and causes ice to melt, and so on and so forth. So each time you add something to your diagram, it's going to affect the other, like the other spheres as well. So um, 
We can also have animal habitats being destroyed. So through, um, you know, deforestation and things like that. Habitats destroyed. Um, the ground naturally releases carbon dioxide and methane from the bacteria that live in the ground. And so we know that as permafrost melts and things like that, we're increasing the global temperature. When the temperature increases, it causes more wildfires. So that's gonna add more carbon dioxide, et cetera. So let's move on to the atmosphere. Okay, we have problems now with drought in certain areas because of the increase in temperature and the shift in the water cycle. You can have extreme storms, so more hurricanes, things like that. Um, hotter temperatures cause more wildfires, which release more greenhouse gases. You can also add wildfires over here to the sort of the biosphere. They're kind of connected, so um, we can kind of do that as well. And then heat waves. Another important one for the biosphere, think of things like um, polar bears or lots of other animals where they're having to change their area in which they live because where they're living, um, the habitat is changing drastically. So either through um, destruction from people or destruction from flooding. So at the hydrosphere, we get um, flooding happening because there's more water and less ice. And when you have flooding, coastal habitats get destroyed. Uh, we talked about the uh, ocean currents and how the North Atlantic pump is slowing down because of the increase in temperature. And if that happens, it's going to stop the movement of warm air around the world, which is going to make some places really hot and some places really cold.